Hey besties, welcome back. Today we're going to be chatting through all the books that I read in September. So I have my little stack here and I'm ready to tell you all my thoughts, whether they're worth it or not, in my opinion at least. I think I'll go through all my fiction reads first and then move into the non-fiction. Starting off with Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. If you guys don't know, this is the author of The Hating Game, which is one of like the most highly rated books over the internet at the moment, or at least recently. And it's also a book that I didn't really love. I think I gave it a three stars. It was just not that great to me and I don't really get the hype but each to their own we're all gonna like different books so I was a bit hesitant to start this one but I am so glad I did because it was one of my only five star reads this month I think I originally rated it a 4.5 or a 4 but now looking back I'm like no like I loved it like it was so good and I don't think I have any critiques so I think this was a five star for me if you don't know what it's about we have our main character Ruthie who works at a retirement village and although she's only in her 20s she acts like a bit of a granny like goes to bed early watches the same TV show every night, loves bubble baths, doesn't really love going out partying, doesn't really socialize a whole bunch, and she meets Teddy, who is just kind of a ladies man, like he's a bit of a charmer, he rides a motorbike, he's covered in tattoos, and their first interaction isn't great, Teddy kind of accidentally insults Ruthie, but later on he ends up getting a job at the retirement village and they are forced to spend quite a lot of time together, and they end up becoming really good friends, so I would say it's more of like a friends to lovers kind of trope rather than an enemy to lovers because they didn't really dislike each other for that long like Ruthie was offended at first but she got over that really quickly and it's honestly just so cute because you're in this retirement village with these grannies who are so cute and they're so funny and in my opinion it was just such a feel-good wholesome read and I just loved it so I definitely recommend this one probably my biggest recommendation out of this whole video because it was just phenomenal. I loved it. Moving on, we have my Coho book of the month. I'm trying to spread out my Colleen Hoover reads so I don't read them all at once because I'm going to be sad when I have none left. But this month I read Regretting You, which I've heard quite a bit of hype about. And I did enjoy this. I think it was like a four star read for me. So pretty good for me, but not my favorite Colleen Hoover book that I've read. This one was really interesting because you get the perspective of a mother and her teenage daughter. And the mother kind of has her own romance storyline. And, and then the daughter has her own little romance going on as well so you get to kind of see both of their stories so it's kind of like a two-in-one which is fun both the mother and daughter are also dealing with quite a lot of grief and someone from the mother's past comes back into her life and the daughter is kind of dealing with this just like new idea of love and what relationships are and how to navigate through I don't know just being a teenager and finding love for the first time but also like dealing with this grief so it's really really interesting and I will say I really enjoyed both of the love interests in this book I I loved both of them which is always a good sign. My main critiques for this one was one I think because you're following two storylines you don't get as much depth as you would if you were just following one because obviously the author has to spread the time over two different storylines and two I can't really say exactly what happened because it's going to spoil what the story is but one of the characters didn't do something that I wanted them to do and that frustrated me so much like so much and I know it was like intentional by the author to not do the thing that I wanted them to do but I was just so annoyed it so I didn't get a five stars for me but the ending it was so good I really like I don't know I don't feel like I get butterflies very often when reading books like I don't feel like I swoon over characters very often or even over like situations or scenes but the ending of this book I just was like oh my gosh my heart is just like <laughs> I loved it so I definitely do recommend this one. Colleen Hoover never disappoints. We already know that. And I already have my next Coho book lined up for next month. I'm very excited about it. Then we have The Perfect Family by Robin Harding. I've read one other book by Robin Harding, which was The Arrangement. And I do think I preferred The Arrangement to this one. Not significantly. Like, I still enjoyed both of them. I think this was like... I don't know, like three and a half stars for me maybe. I can't even remember what I gave the arrangement now that I'm thinking about it, but it was just a very unique storyline, so it was very interesting. Whereas this one, it's just your classic suburban suspense thriller kind of vibe. And I've just read a lot of those and sometimes they're really good. And this one still was really good. While I was reading it, I was hooked. I really wanted to know what was gonna happen, but I feel kind of conflicted about the ending. It ended up being a lot more simple than I thought. That's not a spoiler, I don't think. I'm not gonna tell you exactly what happens. I feel like in thrillers most of the time I'm like shocked by the ending it comes out with this major plot twist and you're like what I like can't believe I didn't see that before blah 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 and this one just didn't have that but in saying that I feel like the simplicity of the ending was so well done that I can't really be mad at it does that make sense like you're expecting this crazy thing to happen but then it doesn't happen and you're like oh like I 
it was still unexpected because I wasn't expecting the answer to be that simple, but I enjoyed this. It was a good read. It was a really fast read. I've read it as part of my like 24 hour challenge, so I got through it in a matter of hours, probably only like two sittings or something. Did enjoy it, just not like the first thriller that I'd recommend to someone. Next we have the first two books in the Addicted slash Callaway Sisters series. So this series is 10 books and they all surround a friend group which is made up of three couples which is also made up of three sisters and their boyfriends um, or their love interests or whatever. So obviously I am not that far into the series yet and the first few books are only about Lily and Lo but you still get to meet the other people who are in the friend group who have their own books later on but I just haven't got to their books yet. And if you're confused about which order to read the books in, screenshot that. But if you buy the first book in the series, you have the reading order in the front cover, so you don't really have to ever be confused. But I'd probably rate the first one like a four stars, and then the second one probably like a three, three and a half. Um, I feel like it's one of those things that will probably end up being a five star series to me, but the books themselves may not all be five star reads, if that makes any sense. I feel like this series as a whole is just going to become a huge like comfort series to me. I think all of the characters are just almost like my friends, and I'm only two books into the series, but I just love the friend groups so much. I love the whole found family trope. I think that's one of my favorite tropes to read about. I just love it when people have like either gone through trauma or just found life really hard or feel really alone and then they find a group of people that just love them and treat them like family. I think it's such a beautiful thing to read about. But the series is just about a bunch of really rich kids from very wealthy families who just are kind of full of flaws and they're dealing with that and they're dealing with relationships and friendships and going through college or other stuff and they all have their own little stories going on and I just love it so definitely recommend these but I will say the writing really sucks like I feel like it's so what patty like it, it doesn't feel like you're actually reading like good quality literature <laughs> but sometimes it's just kind of nice to not have to really think through anything and not have to really like think about the themes or like things underlying the story and whatever it's just like I'm just reading a really trashy romance and I just want to enjoy it so that's probably what you'll get out of those books if you read them and my last fiction read for this month was Normal People by Sally Rooney and I feel like I've lived under a rock because it's taken me so long to read this I feel like everyone and their mum has read this book but I just put it off for a really long time because people seem to either really love it or hate it and I thought I would be the person that hated it everyone says that Sally Rooney's writing is quite unique and it's just very different she also doesn't use quotation marks in speech you just kind of have to guess when people are speaking and when they're thinking which I did think was going to be more annoying than it actually was like I honestly didn't really find it distracting or difficult in any way but I do know that really aggravates some people so I think it's one of those books that you just have to try it like you just have to see if it's for you I was even talking to a friend the other day about it and she's like I just can't get into it and I'm like you know what I think it just is for some people and isn't for some people and that's totally fine that's just how books are in general you either click with it or you don't and you don't have to force it if you don't I just love a story with good emotional depth and this definitely had it it was such a realistic story of going through your first love and first heartbreak and just dealing with with societal pressures and reputation and going from high school into college and all the things that change in that time and just trying to understand who you are and where you fit in with the world. I also think you shouldn't try and rush this. It's a book that you really should just kind of sit and enjoy and if that takes you a little bit longer I think it's worth it. I just yeah it's really not worth trying to rush through it because it's not it's not one of those books you're gonna miss a lot if you do that I think. I will say it's not a feel-good book in any way shape or form. It kind of just leaves you feeling a bit empty and a bit just sad. <laughs> but that's also the point of the book. Like that is what the author intended for you to feel. You know what I mean? Like that that's the point. So I don't think you can really be mad at that. Hearing people talk badly about this book gives me the same feeling as when people go into an art gallery and say that the artwork is ugly. Because art is not supposed to be pretty or aesthetic or even beautiful like sometimes art is just supposed to mean something and supposed to evoke emotion or feeling and that's kind of the point of this book it's not supposed to make you happy it's not supposed to make you feel good and it does at some points and it does make you understand love and appreciate love in some ways but it's not the pretty love it's not the rom-com love so just know that before going into this book it's not a light-hearted fun read but anyway I'll stop talking about normal people now and we'll move into our non-fiction reads 
reads. The first one we have is The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey and I've been reading this for so freaking long. It's taken me so long to get through but I think that's just because it's so packed with information that sometimes you have to read through it a little bit slower to get everything out of it. It's not something you want to skim read because you won't really be able to apply everything and in saying that you can't apply everything in this book. That's not what it's about. Even he says in the book like read this book and take what you want and leave what you don't. Take the things that will work for you. Maybe try a bunch of things. See what does work but leave the things that you're not interested in. The whole point of this book is that Chris Bailey took a year to do the productivity project which is basically where he tried out every productivity tip that he's ever heard of or ever read about and kind of put it to the test and he saw what worked and what didn't and he gives you all of his thoughts and it's extremely interesting because he's so honest as well like he'll tell you about the things that didn't work for him or how he adapted things to work for him and I think it's just such useful information and yeah I just really recommend it a lot of people ask me if they should read Atomic Habits or this I think they're just different books for different things so if you're looking to change your habits or make better habits and kind of maybe change your lifestyle I think Atomic Habits is the book for you whereas if you're just looking to use your time more effectively so maybe continue a lot of the habits that you already have but just use your time better this is the book for you I will say they both touch on habits a lot and they both suggest different habits and lifestyle changes that you can make to live a more effective or abundant or productive life but they are still very different books so there's my thoughts on that one then we have crazy love by Francis Chan this is my third time reading this book because I freaking love it if anyone ever asked me for Christian nonfiction recommendations this is probably the first book that I recommend to them I just really love this book I can't recommend it enough if you want to take your faith more seriously read this book and if you've already read it read it again definitely recommend this one of course five star forever and always <laughs> and lastly we have this one which you can read the title for yourself I'm not necessarily offended by swearing I just it's just not part of my vocabulary so you can read <laughs> but honestly I don't think I ever would have picked this book up for myself if it wasn't for my brother he recommended it to me so I purchased it we've been through a lot of similar things in life experienced a lot of the same childhood trauma so when he recommended this book I was like hmm if my brother recommends it I should probably read it and I will say it took me a while to get into it I would like to say that I read a decent amount of non-fiction books and I've also read a decent amount of psychology based books I have a psychology degree so you'd expect that from me and what I really Really struggled with when I first started this book is just how conversational the language is and I mean I should have expected that based on the title of the book like it's not supposed to be some prestigious scientific language kind of book but it just took me such a long time to be able to sit and read it and not get distracted by the language because oh, there was one thing that she said that I was like are you joking? Like, why am I reading this book? And I just want to say it's written by an incredibly intelligent and qualified lady. So it's not against her qualifications or anything like that. But oh, I don't even know what it was anymore. But just some of the things she says, I'm like, uh, that's kind of cringe in my opinion. It's almost like she's trying to be cool but she's not quite getting there. So it's just a bit cringe. But also in saying that, some parts are funny. So I don't really know. This is already a pretty short book. It's under 200 pages, but I feel like it could have been even shorter if it wasn't so conversational and maybe it wouldn't have been as enjoyable if it wasn't as conversational. I don't know if conversational is the right word even, but it's just like, it's not written in a way that books are normally written in. Like, let me read you a few sentences on one of these pages, but I'm going to replace the cuss words because I don't want to get demonetized. This book is about general life bull beepery and other people's beepitude. The beep that might not be traumatic per se, but isn't making anything easier. The ways we manage stuff that isn't full-blown trauma, but sure as beep isn't kittens, rainbows, and teddy bears. So it's not bad. It's just very unusual for a psychology non-fiction book. I haven't come across a lot of books that have writing like this. So do with that information what you will. I still do recommend it because it has some really, really quality information in there. A lot of stuff that I did know, some stuff that I didn't, I found the chapters on addiction extremely interesting because that's just not something that I have a lot of of knowledge about and I also really enjoyed the chapter about grief I think it was really well done so I think this is a great very easy read especially if you just want to understand what's going on in your brain and you've dealt with trauma or maybe you don't know what trauma is and you want to know what it is or how it may have impacted your life I think it's yeah really valuable information but those are all the books that I have to talk about I think the last time I filmed one of these videos I also included my TBR for the next month in this video but I've decided that I don't think I like TBRs I just don't seem to stick to them enough for it to be worth it. I feel like I'm always getting new books 
or borrowing books from the library that I didn't expect to be reading and I'm just a mood reader I just read whatever the heck I feel like reading so TBRs don't seem to be very valuable for me but you guys can keep up with what I read in my weekly vlogs of course and in these monthly wrap ups as well and as always if you guys have any recommendations for me please leave them in the comments below because I love to hear all of your favourite books especially if you have any non-fiction reads I would love to hear about them because I feel like I don't have as many recommendations for those but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me chat about books because you guys know by now that I just love to chat about books all the time but I love you guys and I will see you in my next video very soon goodbye